So I don't know about you, but I was pretty convinced about the previous game in this variation where white played this idea of knight e5, queen f3, and attacked down onto the black king side. And we saw a very short gameplay between two strong grandmasters. However, the current popularity of this variation with the bishop f4 and black preventing the c5 variation, the moves, of course, preceded, as we see here, bishop f4, castles, e3. And then this idea of black playing b6 to prevent white playing c5. Um, so in the previous game, we looked at how white played bishop d3 and then this idea of knight e5, queen f3, queen h3 with an attack. Didn't we like that game? We liked yep. that game. Um, but we said how black could have considered d take c4 and then the usual development of the bishop uh, and the usual pawn move c5 to attack the centre. So normally what happens in this variation is that white takes on d5 straight away. And if now black takes on d5 with the pawn, um, white can now play bishop d3 and transpose to that variation uh, as we saw um, with knight e5 and queen f3. So after e takes c takes d5, black and we've had this question up which I've put to you over the, a, a couple of games is the option that black has. Yeah. Should I take on d5 with the pawn or with the knight? So here black captured back with the knight. And white had the drawback of the bishop being attacked. So white captured on d5. So which way do you think black should take back on d5 with? Because uh, now, for once, the queen is a possibility, isn't it? Yeah, because they've got no knight to, to chase it away. And also it's not um, defending the bishop as no. it had been in previous yeah. games. Um, well, l let's um, not run the risk of having an IQP or the... Well, risk is probably the wrong word, and let's try and take with the queen then. Okay. Now, queen takes d5 we're going to analyse in the next game, because that move... Um, well, I'll just talk about it then. But in this game, white played e takes d5. And we're now going to reach positions where um, we see black play the key move c5. And we're going to get a very familiar pawn structures to the ones that we've seen. So white played bishop e2, which I slightly prefer than bishop d3, only because the bishop can come here and potentially attack the pawn on d5 at some moment. Right. So bishop b4 check was played. How do we stop? Uh, knight d2. Yep. We've seen that move played before. And now black surprisingly went back. So there ex occurred an exchange and then a castles. And um, bishop f5, rook c1, knight d7. Okay. Um, oh, yes, also, we talked about bishop coming out here. Why do you think black didn't just put it on b7? What do you think? Um, I think we spoke about that very early did, on in this yeah. DVD, about how... If black had the option of playing e takes d5, he didn't have to put the bishop on that yeah. long diagonal. He could bring it out to a so-called better square. Um, but do you agree with that? Do you think um, you prefer the bishop on b7? I do, yeah, kind of, just because it's obviously then still pointing towards the white king, whereas at the moment it's... I'm not saying it's not doing anything, but it, I like that sort of, you know, down the long diagonal pointing right at the heart of white's camp. All right, so there there you have it then. Um, you can decide which one you want to do by following Nick Murphy's advice or 2400 player IM's advice. But <laughs> No, I think I Bishop B7 is to, fine. You asked why, whether I would do it or not. <laughs> I didn't say you should do it. And we're just going to... I mean, White played a variety of moves here, but uh, eventually Black played C5. And we're going to reach the pawn structure, which is what I'm trying to explain. Now, A6 sets up a little threat, because if White does play, for example that move yeah i'll play okay i'll play that move um what's the plan that black could now carry out which is uh quite an annoying one for white um just keep pushing the b pawn or something like that yeah, it's actually quite important you see which one which pawn on the queen side there's a big difference between them that's why i said the b pawn or something you said <laughs> okay <laughs> i need to be succinct with your Okay, push the B pawn. <laughs> okay, well B5, and if I move my queen back... So, well, if I move my queen to say A5, what are you doing next? Or you just think black doesn't have to do anything, just move my rook or something. Yeah. Okay, uh, what about this move with the pawn storm? C4, okay. Don't like that? No, that's good. Well, the problem with bishop, uh, sorry, not bishop f3, b5, the problem with that move is that I can throw in this move, 
attacking your queen and when you take back now you haven't got the pawn attack and also you're a little bit yeah. stuck along this side I mean for example rook c8 knight b3 I think everything is kind of hanging for you in this variation yeah. maybe this is an advocation of why the bishop should be on b7 because then it would actually defend its pawn although <laughs> I could hardly agree with anything you say so <laughs> Okay, um, but this is the sort of dream position, the very, very similar to that Karpov um, yeah. Spassky game where white's pieces are all facing down towards here and black really is struggling to, to defend everything. So after bishop f3, I think what black should have done is c4 first. Nice. And then whatever white does, then I play b5 and get the pawn attack. I mean, for example, um, well, let's say I go, for example, knight b1, b5. And then bring my rook in or something. Just trying to play some moves to defend there. Do we think that these pawns are fairly dangerous? And they also prevent white from going e4. Yeah, they're restricting the space that white has. And, you know, potentially in an endgame, you've got them storming down the board. That's what, yeah, that's a, well said again. Um, the pawns could potentially storm down the board. So... In the game, um, after a6, we see white decide, OK, this is the time for me to... Be a bit concerned about um, that b5 push. Another question is, Nick, if I played c4 now, um, what should white do about that? There's a quite a nice, well, nice move. I mean, uh, a move to cut black's plan, which is a6 and b5. How do we try and cut across that plan? Um, so if we just go h3, as yeah. an example, then black goes here and here, and black achieves the pawn flanks he yeah. wants to achieve. But how do you think we could have stopped it after c4? Um, not queen a6? Queen a6? Oh, he's throwing his queen in. No. Uh, well, at least, he, at least you've stopped b... <laughs> at least you've stopped a6. Um, I don't know, if I go here now, followed by bishop c8 and bishop b7... <laughs> um, well, okay, I really queen just a want to prove to you that bishop b7 is a good move. Yeah. Um, well, I, I, just, I just want to... Um, what can we do with our pawns? Move b4 or something? Oh, I don't want to go there because then we allow them Opposite. a pass pawn. Well, no, we allow them a protected pass pawn. Okay. So we don't just... want to allow them that. But, well, I think a b3, b3 would be a far stronger move because now black crucially cannot go there. But why Why not, you know, a6, b uh, But it's b5. too late, they take. Oh, I see, yeah, yeah, of course. So they have to take, and then we can take back with, um, which way, I don't know, I think all ways are good, but, I don't know, part of me feels like I want to take towards the centre, yeah. and then play b4, and if, for example, we get to go b4 and b5, that pawn there will be very strong. And we'll be stopping would, both pawns. It would move, fix yeah. the black queen side pawns, yeah, so structurally white would be very strong there. So do you see, the, do we see why black has to be careful about pushing those pawns if he wants to do it. Yeah. Which is why uh, black played e6 now. And Yannick Pelletier, the grand Swiss grandmaster playing white, he decided this was the time to take on c5. So, again, if you're white, you need to decide when is the right moment to play d take c5 and give black the hanging pawns. Because um, earlier on, black might have considered pushing because he would have had a lead in development. Yeah. Well, now white's piece is all ready, so this is okay for us. Um, in fact, b takes c5 could have been played. Um, apparently, white was going to play e4, and then knight takes e4, and leave black with a slightly weak pawn. Although I still don't think this is too bad for, for black. Um, apparently, this is meant to be supposedly a bit better for white. Do you agree? Just just because yeah. of these guys? Yeah, the pawns. And that these weak. are quite much, these are much more defended, aren't they? Yeah. Okay, so after d takes c5, black played knight takes c5, which means the pawn structure has changed to a... Um, to a different one. <laughs> to a different one. Okay, what's that That's one called? That's loads of green <laughs> <laughs> Have I not taught you anything so far? <laughs> <laughs> to a different one. <laughs> right, it's so queen a day. And queen g6. Okay, but does black have compensation? I'm not going to say compensation because it sounds like we've sacrificed something. Black hasn't given up anything. But in return for this isolated pawn, because normally 
when you have an isolated pawn, you, the general rule is you want to keep as many minor pieces and rooks on the board. And white has achieved the advantage of having swapped off two minor pieces. So every swap off of a minor piece or a big piece will reduce the power, the attacking power of the pawn on d5 and leave it more as a target. Right. So after, for example, white's next move, knight f1, we're attacking here and he's attempting to prevent any black attack by playing knight g3. So who's my, who do you prefer to be in this position? Um, well, I'd say white, just, yeah. Because, yeah? Um, just because of that pawn? Because of that pawn, yeah. Okay, black set a little trap with a5. If I now play rook takes d5, why is that a huge blunder? Why is that a huge blunder? That is a good yeah. question, because... Why is that a blunder? Oh, um, bishop to e4. Ah, good. And white loses. So, um, yeah, he just actually loses the whole rook. <laughs> Can't even give up an exchange. Because if I play here, yeah. which one are you going to take? Well, you can take the bishop. So you can take the bishop or the rook. I'm going to take the bishop. Yeah, good. And then you win a whole rook as well. <laughs> okay, so um, black decided after a5... Knight g3, bishop e6, um, and bishop f3, rook fd8. Okay, so black has managed to defend everything, but do we still think that white's got a tiny edge just because of that pawn? Yeah. Um, we'll go through a couple of more moves just to show how this um, IQP doesn't really help black's position. See how now the pawn has been blockaded, white piles in on the d-pawn again, it's very tricky for black to try and defend. This all looked very similar to a lot of the other games. We yeah. saw that one in the Kasparov game against uh, Magaromov. But there it was very different because the white king was still on e1 and black could now sacrifice with d4. But here it would just lose the pawn. So um, black just sort of faffs around a bit. But I think eventually we see that white manages to keep control of the position like this. Um... It's going to quickly go through some of the moves. It's a lot of manoeuvring, but we see um, both sides. I mean, Black's trying to wriggle out of this pawn, and White's trying to make sure that he's on top of everything. I mean, Knight f5 is actually quite a strong move because yeah. it attacks that and keeps an eye on that. So, uh, so Rook c5, b3, protecting the pawn. Queen moves to a3. And then white ended up winning a pawn like this. Um, and then he won after further adventures. But basically we saw how black was struggling because he had the IQP and he didn't have enough counterplay for it. Yeah. He. So my general thing to take away from this game would probably be if if um, you get that kind of position where white can take on c5 and give black the hanging pawns like this, pawns on c5 and d5, then um, you should judge whether that's you know going to be good for black or bad for black, right. or which side of the board you'd rather play. And if you only give them the isolated pawn on d5, is that a favourable one for yourself or for your opponent? So it's always judging it on the merits of the position, rather than, oh I hate IQPs, or I like IQPs. It should be based rather on the position and whether it suits you or not. So. Yeah.